Hi folks, welcome to the Prepared Homestead. This is Travis. Thank you all for stopping by to watch another chilly morning. I mean, it was, it's just almost at that point that I thought I might put a long sleeve shirt on, but I know that as I'm walking, I'm gonna heat up, so. But it is a nice, cool morning again. But it's supposed to heat up just a little bit, but it's quite possible that we may be seeing real fall set in. Here in the Ozarks, like many of the places you live, you have like pre-fall and then you bounce back to summer and then you have almost fall and then you bounce back to summer and then you have, ah, <laughs> we were teasing you. And then it jumps back to summer before fall finally kicks in. And so it's quite possible that that's the case with this cool weather we're experiencing. So today I wanna to talk about something that I have spoken of a few times in the past, but I don't know that I've talked about all these things together. And I may be the only one that thinks this, but I think that these are very critical areas of preparedness for after SHTF, after the balloon goes up, after it all falls off the cliff, whatever it is. That I think a lot of Americans especially, and Westerners as a whole, lack in these areas. And that is relationships, resources, and communicating. And I think they all kind of are connected. And it's something that we should be aware of and work on. Uh, back in past times, I think human beings had these three things pretty well laid out and nailed down. But in our modern world, and I believe it has a lot to do with modern technology, uh, we kind of fail in these areas. People just aren't really good at communicating with each other anymore. They, you know, look at what goes on online. And, and if people think that in face-to-face -face communications, you communicate like you do in a chat room or some comment section of a video or whatever, you're gonna be really mistaken because you have to realize that as things worsen, people are gonna be a lot more serious about things. They're not gonna put up with people's baloney as much. And the possibility of something turning violent is going to continue to increase because it already has. How many of you have watched videos and seen stories in you know the last few months or so, last year or so, of violent things happening that really kind of made no sense, you know? I mean, they've things like that's always happened but I'm talking about this is happening more and more often. You know, someone sitting in your spot on the subway train and you just decide to bludgeon them to death. You know, just crazy stuff like that. So if you don't know how to communicate, de-escalate a situation, it's gonna be a problem. And so many people today, they immediately go on this attack, verbal attack, you know, calling someone names telling someone they don't know what they're talking about, all this kind of stuff. And in the future, the near future, that could be a death sentence for a lot of people. And so we really need to work on the ways that we communicate, a type of peaceful communication. Peaceful meaning that you're trying to de-escalate, but at any moment you're capable of becoming violent yourself if the need pushes you that way. The other thing is, is relationships uh, folks like you and I have a hard time working on relationships and I don't mean that you know with your wife and your kids and your family I'm talking about people outside of your circle uh, most of us have our own little inner circle of people maybe it's your your mag group maybe it's your little tribe your crew your, your whatever it is you know, your Bible study group, it, it, you know, homeschool school group. And so that's kind of your inner circle. And you have a relationship with those people. And those are the people in the back of your mind that, you know, you're probably going to kind of stick together as things get worse. But outside that, we tend to lack in that area. And it, I believe it's because over the last several years, as the world becomes more perverse, for lack of better words, folks like you and I are becoming more and more rare. And because our coworkers, and our, you know, friends and our, 
other family members don't think the way we do and there's so much division in the world you know it used to be if someone didn't agree with you that's okay we could still be friends nowadays oh you don't think just like i do you're an absolutely horrible person and i'm never speaking to you again you're never seeing your grandchildren again because you don't think the way i do that's the world we live in and so i believe that folks like you and i because we're becoming more and more aware of this we tend to withdraw into ourselves in our own little tight-knit uh you know inner circle of friends and that's going to be a problem we need to be able to build relationships with people outside uh, of our inner circle what if there is a another uh, prepping group not too far from you and you don't have a real relationship with them you may know of a couple of them you know you, you've, you've chatted online or you've been to some kind of, you know, prepping expo kind of thing and you met, but you don't hang out. You haven't done enough to really build trust, but you know that there's a, a real good chance that that person in that group um, are like minded. Are you building a relationship with them so that as things kind of fall apart, there can be some communication and and trading and, and assisting each other. What about uh, people in your area that, and this is gonna bleed into the next point, that are a good resource? Uh, there's a guy in your area a few miles away and he's an expert welder and he's got all the equipment. He's got generators that he can run his, his equipment uh, off the grid and, you know, you don't know all the details of his beliefs, but he's probably somewhat aligned with you. Do you have a relationship with that guy? You don't have to be buddy buddies, but enough that when things get bad, you can go down there and say, hey, you know, I got these chickens out here that I'll trade you for some welding work. Or, you know, farmer down the road that has a few extra, you know, calves every year that they send to the freezer you have a relationship with them that you can go down there and do a little trading with them for that that one of those calves this is something that again we lack uh, as, a, as a culture i believe to be able to make those connections back in the old days this was totally normal and you still see it out here in the, the sticks where i live because it's not that out here when you're quite a ways from civilization that you don't have these modern things. You certainly do. You have access to them. They're just not, maybe not as accessible to you as if you lived in the city. And so it's sometimes much easier to um, work with your neighbor, you know, if, instead of waiting for the, you know, county department to come in and pour gravel in that, you know, washed out area of your, you know, little single lane gravel road, maybe your neighbor down the road has a backhoe and he's just gonna come do it. So that way you can get in and out. Um, you know, out here in the sticks, if something happens and you call 911, depending on where you're at, response time at minimum is probably 20 minutes and most likely it's gonna be 45 minutes to an hour. Depending on the time and stuff, you know, these counties that don't have a lot of law enforcement, there, you know, if it's in the middle of the night, there may only be two or three cops in the whole county. Uh, and so the response time's really bad. It's better to have a relationship built with your neighbors. So that if someone's trying to kick in your door, you know, you can get on a little radio or something and your neighbors come to your aid. That's the kind of relationships that we need to be building and I worry that because of how our society has been, that it's pushed us to not do those things. And then of course, the last thing is resources. And it, it's very similar to what I was just saying, the relationships to get the resources. What, what resources do you know that exist in your area? Because as much as we try to prep up on everything, okay, uh, not just food. I mean, of course, that's one thing, but all these other areas, you know, you want to have extra spark plugs and 
uh, you know, extra parts for this and that, and something breaks down, you know, you can maintain it. The, the reality is, is we can't do that for everything. We can't stock up on everything, at least probably the vast majority of you. There may be some of you that are, uh, you know, above the norm when it comes to wealth, and maybe you can just afford to do that, but the vast majority can't. And so we need to work on uh, finding the resources in our area and then building relationships with the people in charge of those resources so that if things happen, you know, you can, you can go to them. And you don't have to go to them today and say, hey, I'm trying to plan for the end of the world. Can I count on you to let me come over here and find spark plugs for my lawnmower? when the doo-doo hits the fan. You don't have to do that. Not in that way. You can just say, hey, you know, um, you know, is there is there some kind of agreement or something we can do? I know that you've got this, all these parts back here. If, you know, if I need something, uh, can I come get it? You know, and we can work out some kind of trade or cash or, you know, alternative. If, you know, I mean, look at the way the economy's going. What if everything collapses? You know, my money's not worth anything. Ha <laughs> ha ha Would you be willing to do something different? You know, things like that. There's lots of resources in your area. I um, was speaking to a good friend yesterday and he has made a, a good connection in his area with someone that bought a really nice uh, sawmill. Um, just for personal use, you know, one of the, one of those kind that you can buy, but the really nice kind, you know, really big one. And so he's developed a relationship with them because he's got lots of trees on his property. A lot of them that he's wanting to kind of cut down and clear out certain areas. And a lot of those trees would make some real good boards. And so they're building a relationship and, and talking about that kind of stuff. This is what we need to be doing with all this other stuff that we're doing too. I know it's a lot of work, it's busyness. Well, idle minds are the devil's workshop, so stay busy. Um, but seriously, I think that these are some areas that modern society is really weak on. Some of you older folks, may not have as much a problem with this because you grew up in a in a world that was different you grew up in a world that wasn't all digital on little phones and stuff to where you actually had to have real conversations with each other you know it wasn't all done in some abbreviated short text or whatever you sit down and you had a cup of coffee with someone in the diner and you discussed things right so you probably got this you know better than most, but I'd say anyone my age or younger, and I'm in my mid forties, really need to work on this. And the resource thing I think is also super big uh, because like I said, no one, and I, I know some people, I know a few, few different people in the area I've been able to meet that are way more prepared than we are. I mean, they've been doing this for a long time and they, and they know what they're doing and they have a really solid plan, but they can't do everything. And so having these resources, you know, uh, maybe some guy that owns a salvage yard, you know, uh, you know, auto salvage yard and have a relationship with that guy so that, you know, you need to go scrap some parts off of some of the junkers in his yard. That's a, that's a good resource to have. And that's something that we should be doing on a regular basis. I think it's, not only is it more important now than ever, I kind of think it could be easier now than ever. And the reason is, and, and this may only be true out in the rural areas, but I think it could be true in more of the city and suburban areas, is that as things are getting worse, there are more people, I mean, there's, that are waking up. There are certainly a lot of people still asleep. There's certainly a lot of people that just don't get it. They don't see that anything's really that bad. 
but there are more and more people that are waking up. And so the odds, I would guess, that you could run into someone that they may not be as awake as you are, but they, they know things are changing. And this idea of having some kind of connection with someone that could be a resource to them also uh, sounds good. So I would encourage you to think about that. Think about people in your area that could be a resource, uh, whether it's food, parts, skills, certain things like that, and work on developing relationships with those. And to do that, you're gonna have to learn how to communicate with those people and in a peaceful way so that you can negotiate a good outcome that benefits both you and the other person. So something, again, that modern people really lack in skills. So folks, continue preparing. <laughs> this morning I woke up, I, I wasn't online pretty much all day yesterday. I was very, very busy. And I was in an area that had no cell service or internet service anyway, so I just couldn't get online. Um, I got up this morning, got home late last night, got up this morning and looked at the internet and oh my goodness, YouTube videos, every one of them, the end is near, it's happening, crash is coming, war started, you know, all that kind of stuff. And then the news reports, they don't look good either. Is it all hype and distraction? Like I said, it's possible. Or is it all legitimate? I don't know. But I suspect things are worsening. I mean, not just suspect, they are worsening. But I suspect that, that probably here soon, we're gonna start seeing some things happening that uh, will expedite the situation. Folks, it's time to get your houses in order and take it seriously. Prepare yourselves mentally, physically, and spiritually, especially spiritually. Folks, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.